CVS stock is down. Is the market making a mistake? We're going to perform a CVS health stock analysis like Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time. We'll look at the most telling numbers before we estimate not one but two fair values for CVS. Then you're going to want to watch till the end of the video when we give our rating. Along the way, there's going to be a key bonus metric that just might be the tipping point when analyzing CVS for your stock portfolio. Michael Burry of Big Short fame bought CVS in the most recent quarter. It's the fifth biggest stock that shows on his 13F filing. Stop. With CVS's stock down, you'd have a chance to buy into the company for cheaper than Michael Burry. Is CVS a potential opportunity? Right now, CVS trades for $68.01 per share. Year to date, their stock price is down 29%. This underperforms the market. The S&P 500 is up 8%. Their stock returns aren't all for investors. Right now, CVS pays an above average 3.57% dividend yield. This is added to any gains in their stock. In the last five years, CVS is down 10.5% overall. In the last decade, the company's made some pretty big acquisitions, yet they're still only up 8%. When we go back all the way before the global financial crisis, in the last two decades, CVS has compounded at 5% annually. They beat the market for a lot of this time, but recently their performance has fallen short. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to CVS? Well-known super investors like Michael Burry of Big Short fame recently bought into CVS, making it a big position in his portfolio. Right now, CVS trades just $3 above their 52-week lows. CVS is down $30 from their 52-week highs. Still, just 1.2% of their shares are sold short. How big is CVS? They're a big company. They have an $85 billion market cap. CVS Health offers a diverse set of healthcare services. Its roots are in its retail pharmacy operations, where it operated over 9,000 stores, primarily in the United States. CVS is also the largest pharmacy benefit manager, which it acquired through Caremark. It processes over 2 billion adjusted claims annually. It also operates a top-tier health insurer through its acquisition of Anita, where it serves around 26 million medical members. The company's recent acquisition of Oak Street adds primary care services to the mix, which could have significant synergies with all its existing business lines. CVS is no stranger to big acquisitions. They acquired Anita for $69 billion in 2019. Then they acquired Signify Health for $8 billion in 2022. Most recently, they acquired Oak Street Health for $10.6 billion in cash in 2023. Now with that understanding, let's dive deep into their numbers. In the most recent quarter, Michael Burry added $6.9 million of CVS stock. It's the fifth largest position in his portfolio. Michael Burry is not alone. In total, nine different super investors own CVS. Of these nine, five different people added to the business in the most recent quarter, and investors who have similar principles to Warren Buffett, like Thomas Gaynor, Chris Davis, and Prem Watsa, all have small positions in CVS. Metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. A normal business earns 7% returns on capital. When we look for a benchmark that's double this, we can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. CVS has grown their returns on capital in all five of these years. They've increased from 7% in 2018 to 10.5% in 2022. When these are averaged out, CVS earns 8.5% returns in a given year. While that's slightly better than a normal business, this is below the benchmark we want. It means it's an X on metric one for CVS. Metric number two, we want sales, earnings, and free cash flow growth. This metric's all or nothing. These all need to be up. Boy, has CVS grown. Their revenues are up 74% on the back of these huge acquisitions in recent years. Their earnings have gone from being negative in 2018 due to a big impairment of goodwill to positive today. And CVS's free cash flows have grown by two and a half times when we include today's numbers. This is huge growth across the board for CVS on the back of these big acquisitions. It's our first check of the day on metric number two. Metric number three, we want earnings per share growth like an individual shareholder in the company. We learn their earnings have gone from being negative to positive today. At the same time, even though CVS made these big acquisitions, they've only issued 2.5% more shares overall. Their earnings growth outpaces their shareholder delusion. It's another check on metric number three. Metric number four, we want free cash flow per share growth. CVS's free cash flows have increased by two and a half times. They're up big. Their very tiny shareholder dilution isn't enough to offset this. This means their free cash flows per share have grown. With our third check in a row on metric number four, we have three checks and only one X through four metrics for CVS. 
How will the company perform in the rest of our analysis? We'll find out, but first, let's check in on our bonus. Right now, CVS pays an above average 3.57% dividend yield, but is it safe and can this grow in the future? That's what we want to figure out through our bonus. We want CVS to cover their dividends using their free cash flows. This has been the case in each and every year. CVS kept their dividends flat from 2018 to 2021. They increased these in 2022. At the same time, the company's grown their free cash flows overall. They easily support these dividends in all five years. That's the case today. It's what we want to see. This is a check on our bonus. In recessions, it's businesses with too much debt that can have the biggest losses or even fail. Metric number five, we normally want their net debt to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five years. That would be the case for businesses that haven't made these big transformative acquisitions like CVS has. They had $69 billion of net debt in 2018. With their Aetna acquisition in 2019, this increased to $81 billion. Since then, they've been paying this down. They ended last year with $55 billion. Today, they've increased this again. They have $65 billion. Still, their free cash flows really shot through the roof after that Aetna acquisition, which took place in 2019. So when we add their free cash flows from 2019 until today, those come in at $70.7 .7 billion. That's enough to support their current debt position. While it's not what we normally look for, this is more accurate for the reality of the business. It's a check on metric number five. It looks like CVS's free cash flows can support their debt. The company also had $17.7 .7 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months, the highest they've been at over this time. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want CVS's average free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. This is the first of two different ways we'll use their free cash flows to estimate their fair value. Enterprise value is market cap plus net debt. This looks at CVS like it's a private company. Right now, they have a $150.7 billion enterprise value. We've covered that the company made some pretty big acquisitions in recent years. Since their Aetna acquisition, the company has averaged $14.2 billion of free cash flow in a given year. When we divide that by their enterprise value, we get a 9.4% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Currently, CVS produced $17.7 .7 .7 billion in their last 12 months. When we divide that by their enterprise value, we get an 11.7% current yield. These both are way above that risk premium we want of 5%. They're nearly triple the yield from the 10-year treasury. This is a huge check on metric number six, but don't just run out and go buy the business. Watch as we figure out their fair value per share before you stay for our rating. Everything we've covered so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to look at CVS. This brings us to use a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is like any model in any field, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We'll start with CVS's free cash flows, then use assumptions to grow these into the future. CVS has been somewhat predictable in their past, that can better inform these assumptions, though the company's acquisitions can throw off some of these growth numbers. Keep that in mind, it's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not. If we assume they grow their free cash flows at 6% in each of the next 10 years, then in the following decade, let's assume this growth rate is cut in half and these only grow at 3% annually. We'll add in their tangible book value to give an estimate of their net worth. This accounts for a lot of their long-term debt and their stored leases. That's why it's negative. If we want a market beating 15% rate of return like Warren Buffett does from his investments, at today's valuation multiples, an estimate of CVS's fair value per share is around $86. That's $18 above today's current stock price, meaning Michael Burry was buying CVS for below this price. Keep some key points in mind. This discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based on their free cash flows. It already includes their dividend yield. Their stock wouldn't be increasing by 15% this smoothly. In the last decade, CVS has traded for an average price to owner earnings of 12 and a half times. Right now, they trade at a level of five and a half times. That's less than half of where they've been at, meaning their multiples could be really on sale. Usually, we don't look at EBITDA as it's the least conservative of any measure of earnings. But by this look at CVS, they're actually trading above their historical levels. So that could be a split here and something you want to keep in mind. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It isn't a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before you make any investment decision. Super investors like Michael Burry and Warren Buffett care about the numbers, but they can care about the qualities of a business even more. Let's learn even more about CVS's business. We're going to start with a long thesis. Number one, CVS's diverse operations create the opportunity to view a patient more holistically. 
by managing both medical and pharmacy benefits, which could lead to revenue and cost synergies for the organization. Number two, the firm's entry into provider services has the potential to improve returns for all of CVS's segments if it can help patients more easily and cost-effectively manage chronic conditions through early interventions. Number three, CVS's pharmacy benefit management remains an industry leader due to its intense focus on pharmaceutical cost trends that should continue to attract clients. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows for CVS. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, healthcare reform will likely remain a recurring political topic until something like universal affordable coverage is achieved in the United States and CVS's stock may experience volatility if scenarios that threatens its prospects gain traction. Number two, foot traffic at physical retail stores could continue to decline as consumers increasingly favor online retailers like Amazon, creating the need to reinvent its retail store footprint operations. Number three, investors continue to wait for double-digit earnings growth at CVS, which is an industry standard that has been delayed time and again at the business. It's more likely that growth without other big acquisitions looks modest in the future. Now let's combine these qualities with their numbers as you watch for our rating. So far in our analysis of CVS Health stock ticker CVS, we learned CVS trades at a price below where Michael Burry bought into the business. The company has made big acquisitions reinventing itself in the last several years. That's still happening today. They've spent more than their market cap on acquisitions in this time. Even though their stock has performed worse than the market, not everything looks so bad for CVS. They earn just above average returns on capital. These acquisitions have fueled a lot of growth. They've kept their share count pretty much the same, just diluting shareholders slightly. They've also started to grow their dividends, which they easily support using their free cash flows. While CVS has taken on more debt, they're able to cover these with their free cash flows pretty easily. The big attraction for an investor like Michael Burry seems to be CVS's free cash flow yields. These look pretty attractive compared to the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis at today's valuations, if you believe those assumptions and you want a market beating 15% rate of return like Warren Buffett, an estimate for CVS's fair value per share is around $86. Again, that's up $18 from their current stock price. At these levels, you have an opportunity in CVS for below the price Michael Burry bought into the business. Based on their numbers and their qualities, CVS looks like an excellent candidate for more research. If you enjoyed today's CVS stock analysis, like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and watch this next video on screen.